everyone. Uh, Mike Butcher from TechCrunch. And uh, I'm absolutely honoured to uh, uh, be joined by two legends of the sporting world, Jessica Innes Hill and uh, Matt, who, <laughs> who said to me, What shall I call you? Matt. It's going to be Matt uh, Flamini. And who does not know these insanely incredible sports stars? Absolutely insane. What they've done in their, in their uh, achievements is amazing. Um, athletes and now entrepreneurs, Olympic gold medalist, Dame Jessica Hill. Um, Jessica, when you decided to uh, flip from the sort of sporting world, what inspired you to decide to get into the world of technology? Yeah, I think it's, it's such a good question. So as an athlete, I was always hugely driven, motivated, and your whole way of life is, is sport. So it's the way you eat, the way you fuel your body, the way you recover, and you know, every element of your life. And that passion and drive doesn't leave you when you retire. You're right. So when I retired after the Rio Olympics, I, I found myself in this phase where you know, I knew I wanted to go on to do something different. I wanted to challenge myself in a new way. Um, and the way that inspired me the most throughout my life was sport and exercise and also women's health. So that kind of led me naturally into this world of, you know, delving a bit deeper into understanding women's hormonal health, how exercise and all those elements play into, into it. And for me and the company, it was just an amazing opportunity to develop a platform, um, an app to reach as many women as possible. I want to dig into that a little bit more briefly, uh, but, but in, in a moment, but uh, Matt, you, um, you grew up by the sea and you became inspired by this idea that the sea needs to be, you know, addressed as a sort of a, an environmental issue. Um, but what made you hit upon your idea? And let's hear a little bit more about what you're going to be doing. So yes, as you said, I grew up by the sea. I think the main two reasons to go in that field is the first one, passion, because obviously I was... Uh, I was kind of inspired growing, growing up by the sea and wanted to also bring a, a solution and be part of and bring my, my contribution. The second part is, is a challenge, as you were saying, Jessica. I think we are, we are competitors, we are fighters, and we love to win. And um, the question was, uh, was I crazy enough to go in that direction? And as you say, I moved to an industry which is a chemical industry and trying to bring uh, my small contribution to accelerate the, the transition. Um, but um, you, you're, so you're both sort of you have both have this all these inspiring ideas behind your uh, your uh, your startups. But one, one other thing I was amazing in reading about what you're doing is that how little is known about women's health, um, especially in the world, realm of sports. I was reading that only six percent of sport and exercise studies are done using exclusively female participants, and it's almost like women aren't really on the map, isn't isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. And as we delve deeper into understanding, you know, that gender data gap is, is still huge. You know, there's very little research done into solely understanding women's physiology. And that's from an elite sporting perspective, but also from a general perspective as well. There's not enough funding and investment put in this area. And, you know, women are hugely complex beings with very unique physiology that needs Absolutely. to be understand yeah. and understood in a deeper way. Um, and for us, everything that we're trying to create and, and feed our subscribers and women in the app is all about understanding their body and in, in tune into you know, their unique kind of hormonal fluctuations and how they can make you know, positive lifestyle interventions to, yeah, to change their daily moods, their energy levels and the way they face those life phases that you go through as women. And um, now that you're in the tech world, have you found differences in the way that... Um, you know, the, the sort of industry goes about its, its place. You know, you're, you, you've been in the sporting world, you're, you're now in the tech world to some extent, obviously. Um, what sort of difference have you no dis differences have you, have you noticed, Matt? <clears throat> I think there are a lot of, a lot of parallel. We were talking earlier about the mindset. You know, when you're an athlete and you have to perform every single day and be at your best, I mean, this is also a requirement you have to, to do, you know, like when you are in a, in a tech world. I mean, the life of an entrepreneur is made of up and down. It's very challenging, a lot of, uh, lot of pressure. <clears throat> so all those parallels, you know, you find them in sport. Performing under pressure when you play in front of 80,000 people, when you're an entrepreneur and you are putting all the resources in, in your tech company, you have to perform, you have to succeed. 
I think also like dedication, hard work, I mean like giving it all, this is something which is, which is a requirement to be at the top level in sport and this is a requirement to also be like successful. And the last part I think is very much the, the team spirit. The team spirit, being able to inspire, being able to lead a team, but also be able to, to listen to, to the people around you. So all those things are requirement to success, which you find in sport, but which you also find in a tech world as, a, as an entrepreneur. Jessica, what's, your, what's been your experience? Yeah, I think they're two very different worlds, but there are, there are lots of kind of elements that relate and go very naturally together. And I think Matt's right. You know, you have to have all those qualities that we found as, as sports people to bring into this world as well. Resilience is a huge part of success in sport and also into this entrepreneur world. I think failure and understanding failure is really important. It's something that I learned through sport. You know, you can't succeed all the time and you have small wins here. You have to learn how to adapt and shift the way you work and the way you move within a sporting world, but also in a business world as well. Um, so, I mean, there's so many incredible learnings that you take, but again, you know, we're in this world where you're constantly pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and finding new motivation, and that's just incredibly inspiring in itself and, and meeting great people along the way. Do you, do you find when you speak to your, your team that, um, that it has, there are sort of uh, echoes of your past, perhaps? This is not always easy. Uh, I like to compare, you know, top athletes with special forces. And as you were mentioning, I mean, the, the mindset, the mental aspect is very important. I think we are engineered, we are designed to win. And even if through our career we learn to lose, this is something you never accept. So obviously I think the, the approach with your colleagues, with your partners in, in, your, in your work, I mean, has to be dealt a little bit different than we used to do like in our, in our, in our field, I will say, like when I used to play football. I mean, when you play football, uh, you give it all in a way that uh, there is a, a total commitment. Obviously, when you interact with your colleague, <laughs> this is probably not the same, same level of, of, of dedication, even if obviously this is important. When you're on a field, is, is live or die. And, uh, you know, we are a wolf pack and uh, we have to perform, we have to win. Obviously, when you're in an office and you have to, to reach your target, obviously it's a, it's a dedication. You want to make sure everybody's successful, but you have to deal with people around you with a bit more delicatesse. There's, a, there's obviously that sort of huge like high performance aspect. In the technology world, we're going through an enormous change right now with uh, uh, Twitter is going, is going through enormous changes. Uh, Elon Musk has just issued a, a, a note to everyone saying, we're going to go hardcore. But do you think that this sort of management technique is of an older era, uh, an older sort of time when, you know, managers were like, beating over the, everyone over the head kind of thing. What, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I've been through different stages in my career from a sporting context where I think that kind of leadership was quite common at the start of my career. So you'd have one person that kind of takes full charge and, and commands, you know, control over the team. Yeah. But actually your team and you as a leader, you have to evolve. And I think my personal experiences through sport and, you know, having more understanding of, of what you want to achieve and how you achieve it, the team aspect and how you work together is the reason why you create success and change. So for me, the learnings from you know, my team experiences within sports and bringing that into the tech world and developing a team um, of my own is, is hugely important. And the way you interact with those members, yeah. the, the way you understand personality, the psychology behind those individuals is absolutely imperative to you, know, you achieving what you need to yeah, achieve. Yeah, it's, 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 we're in, in a, sort of a different era, aren't we? What would you say? Yeah, I think you have three different ways of seeing it. I mean. You could see it as a crisis, but I think every crisis is bringing opportunities. The second thing is we have been looking about growth. I think it's probably time in the tech world to also look at profitability. And this is something we are looking, you know, like in our industry, in the chemical industry. And, and the last part, I think <coughs> you're talking about Elon Musk and others uh, and, and the method of, of acting, I think is about survival. You know, I mean, uh, there is like Darwin, the Darwin uh, um, theory, which is not about the, the biggest will survive, but the ones who knows how to adapt. And we're going through a transition when you have to adapt. You have to reinvent yourself and you have to, to find solution if you want to be there tomorrow. So obviously everybody can criticize or you can comment on how to do that. Yeah. But the reality, you have to move forward, you have to reinvent yourself. And it's the, the instinct of, of survival. 
So you, you've absolutely you've gone through this sort of whole journey yourselves, and um, by the way, you know the uh, amazing achievements you you had during the Olympics and 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 yourself as well during the uh, your sporting career uh, are, are absolutely huge. And but when it comes down to the nitty gritty, doing a technology company is a uh, a whole other you know uh, ball game <laughs> to coin a phrase. Um, you've raised uh, 15 million. Uh, I think pounds or dollars, is that correct? Euros. Euros, I'm, whoops a daisy, euros, sorry. Um, to, uh, to, to address this whole issue of uh, being a plant-based alternative to uh, oil-derived chemicals, um, that's, uh, the, the, both of you are doing very highly technical, uh, technical things. What's, what's, what's uh, uh, your approach to uh, dealing with perhaps sceptical investors who perhaps might think that Maybe you don't know your stuff. Uh, you know, you've come from a different world. Um, but do, you, do you get that at all from investors? Maybe let me tell you a little bit what I'm, what I'm doing in a few words, if Please. you don't mind. So um, we started our journey 10 years ago. And uh, sometimes I'm being asked, what have you been doing during 10 years? I mean, unfortunately, you have an industry like deep tech where things take a bit longer. So <clears throat> in a few words, a lot of people want to address and find solutions to, to, to climate change and to the energy transition. I mean, one word which is where we're not talking enough about that is potentially like the chemistry, the chemical world, which is, I mean, all around us, everything we use is being made of raw material, is coming from this industry. This industry is generating today one third of the oil demand, and by 2050, it will generate more oil demand than transportation, meaning truck, cars, plane. Yeah. This industry is going through a massive transition, and what we're trying to do is to replace harmful chemical coming from the oil industry by plant-based chemicals. So in a few words, we're trying to deliver more sustainable and safer consumer good. Consumer good which we are using every day, going from shampoo, deodorant, pants, and we're working with the big guys, you know, from the, the FMCG companies to the chemical company to help them accelerate the transition. So as you were saying, yes, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because it feels like we're not talking about those problems. Obviously, funding is an important aspect, but still in our industry because we are addressing like some serious issue you have c capital you have uh, funding because we have raised a lot of you know the esg goals have been an important aspect they are on the agenda of most of the large groups most of the large uh, governments so there is today funding it's just a matter of like explaining the problems and making sure you know we can together solve it Absolutely. So you know what you're talking about, but do you, do you get any sort of scepticism sometimes from investors because you, you come from such a different industry? I think the hardest thing with, um, with our company and trying to gain investment has been around the whole education around yeah. women's health and understanding the importance of investing in that area. I think there's so much to draw from different people in different fields. And I think within the world of sport, you know, the greatest successful athletes draw from other sports, other areas, and they learn how they do it and they adapt the way they perform and move forwards. And that's something that I think can definitely happen with sports people coming into the, into the tech world as well. You know, we yeah. all bring different skills and qualities and it's about creating that right team and that environment around you. So from our perspective, it has been quite interesting having conversations from yeah. the kind of female's health physiology side than, you know, your, your previous kind of yeah. accreditation. Uh, um, just on that, on that point, um, you, uh, in the, there's an ongoing debate that's been going on for years about how women in particular are treated in the technology industry. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, that issue? Yeah, I think, I think it's changing massively. I think yeah. we see more women involved in tech in, in around, you know, lots of different areas, not just one specific area. But I think it's, it's a challenge. And, you know, whether we like it or not, there are disparities. And there is a huge, like I said, gender data gap within the, the science side of it. And yeah, there massive, is in the yeah. tech side as well. And that's something we have to acknowledge. You know, some people talk about femtech very proudly. Other people think that it's not a word we should use. So it's really interesting to see those different relationships but um, yeah I'm very proud to be able to you know try and push forward in this area of tech where you know we need more female founders and we need that diversity amongst what we do because we bring Absolutely. so many different skills. I think that deserves a bit of applause perhaps everybody. Yeah we do need more female founders. Absolutely. Um, 
with um with you know i mean you you're obviously doing things which are sort of similar to some to some extent um ongoing continuations of your own careers um but um what do you feel right now are some of the sort of the big issues that you you see in the tech world do, do people sort of uh do, 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 you, do you, I mean, how do you sort of keep in touch with what's going on? Are you a, uh, an avid reader of technology industry news, Matt? <clears throat> First of all, uh, let's not forget that we move forward with a very humble approach. I mean, I became a CEO recently. I joined, the, I would say, the executive team like uh, in last March. So I'm still a young, uh, a young CEO, young entrepreneur. I like to be a sponge and to grab as much information possible. So yeah. I don't think I'm the best person to, to, to comment on a tech world. Obviously, this is a world which is in a transition. This is a world which is evolving very quickly, and we have experienced it the past, the past six months. After, I think, investors or entrepreneurs which have been here for longer, they have also experienced it in the past. I mean, we have been through crisis before. We will go through crisis tomorrow. I think the most important is to look at our main goal. I mean, if I take the uh, comparison with, with football, you start, you start the season aiming to, to win the league, and every three days you have a game. And you're going to win one, you're going to lose one, but you should not lose your objective, which is like winning the league. So I think every entrepreneur has an objective, every entrepreneur has a vision, and he's going to go through difficult time. He's going to go through some wins, he's going to go through some loses, and he has to focus on, on his own goal. So I think being resilient, uh, keeping strong and uh, keeping his eye on, uh, on, uh, on the main goal is very important. And uh, people have experienced crisis before. I think it's important to switch it and to look at it also as opportunities. So this will be, I think, my, my, my few comments as a, as a young entrepreneur and as a young, uh, as a young CEO. Do you, do, you, do you find that sometimes there's um, way too much like almost, uh, you know, squirrel, new brand new thing going on in, in the sort of tech world? People sort of jumping around rather than sort of f focusing, perhaps. Yeah, I, I think you have to be, you know, you have to be within your field and aware of what's going on around you. Yeah. But I think, you know, it, relating back to you know our previous life as well, you have to be not distracted by everything as well. So you can control what you can control and yeah. kind of put everything right. in the background. So I think you have to be aware of what's going and the trends and the movements within technology, of course, because you have to move forwards, but you also have to be very streamlined and focused and you know, your short-term goals as a company, as a brand and your long-term goals and, and make sure you're moving towards those. Keep focused. Definitely. Absolutely, this is the watchword. Your, um, you, your, your part of your what you're doing is is very much in the climate tech field, and it's obviously a such a huge issue right now. Um, what, uh, in, in terms of climate, uh, what, what are you, what's your thoughts about uh, you know where we can go from here? You know, do you feel that your your uh, uh, efforts are going to be able to address that that massive issue? I'm a believer, and you have to be when you tackle such a, an important issue. Obviously, we, we know there is a lot of work ahead of us, but it's important to, to, stay, to stay positive. Even not if you believe we're not going to make it, it's already like an additional issue. So we have to ask the question, I mean, are we doing enough? Are we going to do it quick enough? Yeah. But I think you have to onboard everybody. If we speak about climate change, too many times I'm saying you have to, to make it relevant to people. You know, when you have a family which is like fighting to, to put food on the table at the end of the month, it's not always easy to think about, about climate change, but if you are able to empower people, if you are able to make it relevant to people, I think we, we, we will be able to, to find a solution. But I think those days also you have, <clears throat> I mean, at least in my industry, you have massive pressure coming from the government, putting more and more regulation. You have also massive pressure coming from the consumers, people like like us, who want safer and more sustainable product, and this is very much driving change. So I think being able to, to create awareness, being able to communicate around that problem, like for example in our industry, I mean like, I like to say, for example in personal care. Personal care, we all buy shampoo, we all buy like shower gel, our biggest organ is the skin. So if you don't realize that every day buying like a shitty, you know, uh, uh, gel douche, you know, shower gel or shampoo every day, you spread on yourself like chemical product, we have a, which have a, a negative impact. I mean, this is a huge, huge, huge issue. So talking about it, engaging with everybody, helping people to understand. I mean, what's better to do instead of doing something else is 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 extremely important those days. I would say. Yeah, that, in other words, in a way, you've become spokespeople for your 
not your sectors and also for your products. But um, you know, you were obviously you became used to it in your previous lives as sporting professionals, uh, having to be spokespeople for your what you were doing. Um, how has that translated as uh, in into your work now? I, I think it's an opportunity. I think it's a you know credible position that we're in, and you know to come into a new world and a new area, but have some level of profile where you have a voice to elevate what you're talking about. If it's something that's passionate towards you know you as a as an individual, but also something that's driving change and real positive change in legacy, you know we've experienced that in our previous life, and that's an incredible thing to be a part of now. So for me, I you know I want to use my platform. I want to use my voice to to shout about women's health and to, you know, to get more studies done and, and raise more money for more products like, like ours. Um, so it's an honour, to be honest, to be in this position. That's, that's a, absolutely one of the best arts I've ever heard to that because, um, because a, lot of fa- a lot of the time founders don't realise that they've got an incredible voice. Um, when you, were, you know, decided to do what you're doing, um, did you translate any of the, that kind of experience into how you sort of present uh, your, your company? Well, I think, as Jessica was saying, we have, a, I mean, as athletes, we have a platform. Uh, and especially we see those days and sport is playing a more and more an important role in our society. I mean, like those days, people are losing trust, people are losing hope. And I think sport is an industry which is still able to bring people together. Um, so what we like to do and what we're trying to do is to use our platform, <laughs> social media, our voice to uh, sensibilize, uh, I would say, the largest, the largest audience to, to problems such as J- Jessica is fighting or, or, or like the, the problems I am fighting. So I think every athlete has a social responsibility because every athlete is becoming, I would say, like a bit of a role model towards the next generations and it is our duty to be able to communicate and to also like be able to inspire the, the next generation because most of the, the the people following us are also young kids so i believe there is a social responsibility we have to embrace and we need to take forward absolutely um you've both been through the the whole venture capital kind of uh you know, r- mill as it were. Um, you are supported by Mackie VC or Mackie VC. I'm not quite sure how Mackie to pronounce VC it. And Thank you. Yeah. And lots of and also um, Venrex as well, obviously. Um, when you were both dealing with the investor side of, of things, uh, you know, tell us about your kind of your experiences of dealing with investors and you know perhaps how different it was or some of the fun thing, funny things that happened to you. Yeah, I think it's just a huge learning curve. Yeah. And to be honest, if I think about how we started at the beginning of this process when we launched in 2019 to where we are now, you know, I've, I've learned so much. And that's been through having conversations with different types of investors, having conversations with different founders and entrepreneurs as well, and, and seeing how their journeys have been very similar as well. Um, we're very lucky to be supported by Mackie VC and Venrex, and they have been like an incredible guiding force of, yeah. of you know, how we go about approaching conversations and, and introductions and, and various things like that. So, yeah, I mean, we've had lots of other conversations with investors that haven't been as great. And I think you, as an athlete and as a sports person and as an entrepreneur, you have to kind of create that level of resilience. You know, we're starting in a new world from scratch now. We have, you know, the accolades that we had before and we have the experiences that we had as sports people, but we are starting from the bottom again, you know, motivating ourselves and, and trying to become successful successful in a, in a completely different world. So yeah, it's all those learnings of how to adapt and take on you know, feedback, um, not taking anything to heart and making sure that you move on and yeah, get the funding that you believe that you deserve for your company. And, and how about you, Matt? Did you um, have some interesting experiences when you were speaking to your investors? Did you find that, did you, did you think, you know, do you know who I am kind of thing or did you any, not have those moments? So first of all, uh, I started 10 years ago. So for 10 years, I yeah. was investing. I mean, the money I was making on the field, I was investing it in uh, my tech company and developing technology. So maybe to go back a little bit, like why a journey of 10 years? Because you have to develop the technology and prove the technology in the lab. Then when you have proved it in the lab, you have to move to industrial scale. So we had to retrofit a plant in order to demonstrate that technology was working on a larger scale. Once you achieve that, then you have to go through what we call certification in order to be able to commercialize your product. Once you have done that, then you start interacting 
with the, with the consumers, meaning like uh, the big FMCG companies, the big chemical groups, then they are the ones validating your product and starting the reformulation. So obviously it takes like a long time. So we wanted to, in a few words, uh, uh, get to a certain point where bringing investors on board was making sense. So now we're in a commercialization phase. This is why we raised those 15 million from investors such as Sofinova, because we wanted obviously bring some smart money. We believe in a, in a biotech world in, in Europe, they are some of the most sophisticated. Obviously, uh, uh, it was uh, an interesting journey, I will say, because on one side, we needed like external money to also validate all the work which has been done for the past 10 years because this is a form of like stamp bringing like some uh, important investors. On the other side, I would like to say that raising money is not easy. Uh, in our world, let's say that you have a competition on that day, you have three months, six months, or if you're an Olymp Olympic, you know, like winner, and you know, you're going to have the next Olympic like in one year, two years, and every day you're building up and you're going to bed, you know, like seeing the, the, the picture of the, of, the next, uh, on a, of the next game, thinking, okay, in six months, three months, two months, four months, I will get there. I mean, my experience in raising capital, you expect to raise, I mean, like next week, next month, or in two months, and it never happened. Every day there is something, there is something you have to address. Every day you have a more and more question. Every day you have some extra, you know, uh, fire to, to, to stop. So it's mentally, I would say for me, it was mentally tiring because it was never happening like we were expecting it. So um, I'm glad that we have them on board. They are, it was a great achievement. I think it was important in a journey of an entrepreneur to bring some, some key investors. But it was not simple. But at the end yeah. of the day, if it was easy, everybody will do it. So I think you have to embrace and enjoy the journey also very much. Now that you, you're both in the tech world um, and you, you know, you're here at Slush, which is very, the quint very quintessential conference for this industry, um, do you get the sort of taste of, of uh, the idea that you might become investors in your own rights and uh, in, in, in other startups or in, in, or in VCs? Um, do you sort of, are you interested in that, that world as well? Yeah, I think more than anything, I'm just inspired by the number of entrepreneurs that I've met so far and their journeys. So for me, we're very much at the start of this, this journey within our company. So I'm so focused and like Matt says, there's so many highs and lows and fluctuations in what you do. And we've got a big, you know, a big ass. We're trying to educate as many, you know, women about their bodies, but also investors and other entrepreneurs as well. So I feel we've got a tall order here. Um, and we talk about focus. I'm 100% focused. In, in making this work and you know investment is something that may come in the future but for now it's it's about you know creating a company that has legacy right so sort of keeping keep your eyes on the prize what about you uh, matt would you uh, become an investor yourself do you think at some point so I, i've done also investment i joined the angel uh, angel program of atomico yeah so uh, which is i think also uh, super exciting because in my industry, the, the chemical world, I think, is an industry, it's a big industry, but it is an industry which is moving very, very slowly. So what I like to do is to also be able to bring, you know, like the breakthrough, the successful, you know, stories which you find in a tech world and also like bring technology in my world. So I'm spending my day challenging the scientists, challenging the engineers and pushing them to, to move forward quicker than, than what is being done until now in, in this chemical world. So yes, I enjoy like meeting entrepreneurs, I enjoy meeting founders and also like this journey with Atomico is super exciting because there is a lot to learn and also which a lot of learnings you can transfer from the tech world, which is moving extremely quickly, to our world, or at least my world, which is a chemical industry. Because I think something which has been experienced and something which is really much happening in the tech world is like the large, large groups, such as the Google from this world, the Facebook from this world, the Amazon from this world, have understood that uh, innovation doesn't have to come from inside. And they have all those incubators, and they are bringing the best technology you know, in, in, in their own company. In a chemical world, we see that still those big groups believe that innovation still has to come from inside. So they're a little bit more, I would say, like uh, uh, forward in terms of like bringing right. those new technology from outside. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, both of your, invest your, your investors are, uh, would want to sort of get you in front of their, their Did you ever find your investors are wanting to like call you up? Can you come and speak to a founder? You ever find that? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the most important things as well. Like you have yeah. to be able to learn from each other right. and to be able to communicate your, your story and your journey to other founders is, is really, really useful. 
Absolutely. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time, but that's been brilliant to talk to you. Um, Jessica Ennis Hill and, and uh, uh, Matt, Matt Flamini, uh, thank you so much for coming to Slush. Thank you. Thank you, very thank much. you so much. See you later, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>